Hello again, welcome to the Bible for Everyone. Uh, as I'm sure you know by now, we're reading through Matthew's Gospel, uh, and we're chapter by chapter looking at the things that are there uh, and what they might mean for us today, and how we might be able to more effectively live out our Christian lives, our relationship with Jesus in front of everyone around us in the world. Uh, we've reached Matthew chapter 24, which is one of those chapters that we could spend ages and ages and ages trying to think through and trying to work out. It's one of those chapters that as you read it, you go, what on earth is going on? What is this all about? Jesus is describing some kind of calamity, some kind of destruction. Uh, often it's taken that in this chapter, Jesus is talking about the end of the world, uh, about the apocalypse and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not sure that that's the case. I'll try and explain a little bit. Uh, remember, the starting point for me in this is to remember that very soon afterwards, within the lifetime of that generation who were alive in 70 AD, there was the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. And along with the destru destruction of the whole of Jerusalem, there was also the destruction of the temple. Uh, it meant an end to the sacrificial system, the thing that they'd relied on for centuries and centuries as their way of making themselves right with God. That ended. There was no temple to make the sacrifices in. There was no priesthood to make the sacrifices. And so the sacrificial system ended in 70 AD. There was the dispersal of the Jewish people all round the known world. They were scattered. They were sent out. There had seemed, in, in essence, that there was no longer a Jewish people left anywhere. Uh, and there was this feeling, there would have been this feeling in 70 AD, uh, that these events were cataclysmic. These events were world-shaking, world-changing, world-ending events. Because everything that they'd done and relied on up to that point, they could no longer do and rely on. It wasn't there, it had been destroyed, it was the end of everything. And it was the beginning of a new age. As we read through Matthew 24, maybe you'll see a prophecy about the end of the world. Maybe you'll see description of events of the past to do with the destruction of Jerusalem. Maybe everything in Matthew 24 has already happened. Maybe everything in Matthew 24 is still yet to happen. Maybe everything in Matthew 24 is a mixture of the two. It's things that have happened and things that will happen. It's the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple and it's something to do with the end of the world all at the same time. The only thing that I know for sure is that if anyone tells you that they know for sure what this finally, ultimately, exactly is, then they don't. Read through Matthew 24, but read through it with your eyes open and your ears open. Does it matter what events it's describing, if it's the past or the future? Or is it to do with God being in power? God actually finally being able to put into action his plan for the whole of the cosmos. Even if it seems like there's destruction and there's death and there's catastrophe and there's calamity going along with it. Isn't it amazing that so often the God of death is the God of the resurrection. The God who's there in suffering is the God who brings us into uh, wholeness and completeness at the other side of that. Let's read through Matthew 24. Let's keep an open mind about it. Let's recognize that probably we won't know the final answer to it, but let's read it and see what God might be saying to us through it. Grace and peace, everyone.